Well, thank you so much for having me. That's quite the introduction. I'm so honored to be speaking with all of my friends out here from ACC and beyond. So thank you very much for, for tuning in. And hopefully you get some great takeaways from what we're gonna chat about today because it's something that's probably near and dear to all of us. I mean, we're kicking off the year, a new year, new you kind of a thing, a new chapter. And why not take care of our fur babies? They have been there for us through so much this past year. <laughs> they really have. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how that dynamic has changed and how we go about in treating the overweight and obese fur baby in 2021. And I start with this slide, my friends, because we all are doing this. We all are capturing images of our fur babies. I mean, let's call it what it is. Instagram was made for animals. <laughs> and then it started trickling on over to TikTok. So, you know, imagine a world where we live with fur babies that are lean and fit, but that probably doesn't happen in an ideal situation. And we're gonna talk about those things because, you know, we see all these pictures that come through social media all the time. And, you know, sometimes there are little people a little judgy about it. And, but we can fix this because obesity is a disease, my friends, it really is. So let's talk about some crazy statistics that are, are gonna be pretty interesting for you. Um, so let me just go back one slide. I think I wanted to go back one. Let me just double check. Yeah, so in 2019, an estimated 60% of cats and 56% of dogs in the United States were overweight and obese. Notice that I'm saying the words overweight and obese. Like there are two different scenarios that we see there, but so, more than half, that's right, more than half of our pets are overweight and obese. And so look at our friend on the top left there, that beautiful basset hound. You know how I I'm a sucker for those long back dogs. So, um, but a little bit of my soul irks me when I see this as a veterinarian because I'm like, oh my gosh, if we could just get some of that weight off of him, you know, no, age is not a disease. No, Dr. Christman, like my, my dog is getting older. No, but uh, the weight, is something that can actually improve or enhance if we address the weight issue. So we have to be mindful of these statistics that we see. And a not so fun fact is like 90% of pet parents with an overweight pet don't realize it. They don't realize it. So there's that disconnect that happens. So what do we do about that? You know? And so there's a lot of initiatives that are happening in 2021 because of the fact that there is this disconnect. And let me show you this too, because just to give you a little bit of a greater perspective of things, this is from 2018, so a couple years ago. But again, you know, almost 60% of animals are overweight or obese. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, we're going to talk about body condition score too, because that's a big thing for all of us to understand. And so that's about 56 million cats and 50 million dogs here in the United States. And I'm sure the number is even higher because of pet adoption has been an all time high from 2020. So, you know, 80% of veterinary professionals have tried to help pets lose their weight. But look at this, my friends, 68% of pet owners do it. And you, the pet parents, are ultimately the ones that are going to be the cheerleaders for your fur babies. So if there is this disconnect that's happening right now between 80 and 68%, what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? So, you know, think about all the different, you know, forces that are out there right now. We have social media. We have the, the people at the pet food stores that are telling us to buy this food. This is going to be the one. We have the veterinarian. We have so many different influences out there that are trying to educate us, but also it can be a distraction at the same time. So, but number one should be your veterinarian. And any of us that love biology, I say this all the time that you know, you have the, that cell and the nucleus of that cell is your veterinarian because they're the ones that are going to ultimately help drive and make those cells nice and happy. And so, you know, methods that we do it, we're not reinventing the wheel here too. You know, it's either calorie reduction, it's either increased exercise, low calorie, low uh, fat pet foods that you see. And then 19%, and I have found this actually very interesting because it's so low. It's such a low number that 19% um, do prescription and weight loss diet. So I find that fascinating. We're living in a world now too, where believe it or not, I never would have thought I would say this even five years ago, that kibble shaming is a thing. Did you know this? And like raw food diets and, um, you know, home cooked food diets. Um, there's judginess that happens for some reason. And me as a veterinarian, I respect all types of food. So there should be any of that. But when it comes to like getting weight off, let's work together, not against one another, regardless of what you're feeding your animal, we, we can get that weight off of them. 
So how has the pandemic affected pet obesity? You're gonna find this fascinating. So tune in. I hope you have your fur baby with them too in your lap because um, this poor little thing, this delicious, beautiful angel needs to lose a little bit of weight too with a face like that. I can see why she's a little thick, but listen to this, get a load of this. So we are all over the place with pets and their diets during the pandemic. So we either choose ourselves to go on a diet because of lockdown and you know maybe we're emotionally or stressful eating. And what happens as a result? A little bit of this goes to Fluffy, a little of this goes to Molly. Maybe the kids are dropping things on the floor. You're trying to work from home and you're trying to teach the kids remote learning and they're eating food. The dogs are at the table, the cats are going across your camera. <laughs> and so maybe to distract them, you're giving them some food or you're doing something to try to, um, you know, deter them a little bit. And ultimately it ends up being food. The opposite, here's the opposite side of the spectrum. There's so much walking because, which is a great thing. And that's fantastic. We have found that, you know, exercising our animals. I, I personally have found that really helpful, especially during the summertime, because there's not many things that were open. So just trying to like find yourself a little bit and having a greater mindset and walking my fur babies. I found that to be very, very helpful. So there's a lot of walking that was going on in 2020. And then the other side are there are sick pet parents. A lot of our friends, you know, and pet parents are coming down with COVID and other diseases, of course, but COVID's a big one. And so what's happening, my friends, is that they're either being hospitalized or going to long-term facilities. Some of them have been on ventilators. And so they're relying on friends, neighbors, caretakers to take care of their animals. What's happening? You feel guilty. You feel guilty that mom or dad is in the hospital. So then they're giving them a little extra TLC. Maybe they're not getting all the exercise that they used to, that they were used to having because they're sick with COVID. And so um, that has changed the dynamic in which we do things. And then we have so many treats, <laughs> so many treats out there. And we probably have more treats in 2020 than we've ever had because of the fact that you want to spoil them rotten. The human animal bond is alive and well. And you all know that. You and I both know that. We know that even because in 2020, look at the surge in pet adoptions. I mean, this has been something that has been unprecedented that we're seeing um, shelters that are being completely empty from animals being adopted. We have more cat parents than ever. Um, so that's fantastic. So there is a little bit of education that has to happen. And then there's been quarantine diets too. So like, if, like I was just saying, if I'm gonna lose some weight, maybe I'm gonna put uh, Fido and Fluffy on a diet as well. So again, we're all over the place. So that requires us to have an education with, um, with the pet parents too. So it's, it's, it's really fascinating. So let's talk this, the, bo the body condition score. I wanna talk about this because this is something that is so important that you and I can do. And I always want my pet parents to know what their BCS of their pet is because we can help bridge that disconnect that I just spoke about. So it's a body condition score. There's, um, there's two different methods. There's one on a one through five, and then there's one on a one through nine. I feel like I can't remember what I had for dinner last night, let alone more than five numbers. So I'm a big fan of the one through five scale. And what you see right smack in the middle of the screen is an ideal body weight of a three. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at your fur babies. I want you to look two angles. What you see in front of you is looking over them from a dorsal view, it's called. And then on the side view is a lateral view. And what we're looking for is the abdominal tuck. So we're seeing that nice like hourglass waistline. It doesn't have to be completely in, but it should have a nice form to it. And then also when you're looking at them on the lateral side, we should be able to feel their ribs, but not see them. And so right smack in the middle is a three, a beautiful Labrador uh, retriever that's got a gorgeous body condition score of a three. And so notice that the waistline is tucked up a little bit. Let's go to the, the left here and look at an underweight. So this is a body condition score of a two. The bones are raised with minimal tissue between the skin and the bones. So this could be something that could be, and I see this often with puppies that are growing and developing, and we have to have nutritional counseling. Either their intention is to keep them nice and lean, but I'll tell my parents that like, listen, you know, your kittens need a little bit more nutrition. Let's calculate so many, how many calories we need. This could be from a shelter. This could be from stress. You know, so those are the issues that we could see. This could also be related to like cancer, cachexia, if our animals are aging and losing that body mass index. Um, so they, they have that. Then we have the very, very thin ones. So those are the ones that are super emaciated, really look like they're poor doers. It could be either from abuse situations, 
Um, you know, you're taking them out from whatever situation they've been exposed to. The ribs are, are noticeable. You can almost, they almost look like a walking anatomy lesson where you can see their hips. So that's a one. Let's go to four. Four, four is overweight. Okay, so remember that four is overweight. Five is obesity, okay? I really want you to know the difference between a four and a five. So if you look at the four, there's moderate fat covenants over them. They look like a, like a, a sausage link, essentially. See how they lose that abdominal waist, uh, that tuck? So it's kind of just the, there's no differentiation between the thorax and the abdominal cavity, basically. And then you look on a five obesity, they're engorged, they're like an engorged tick or an ottoman, you know? And I don't mean this to say like, um, to sensationalize obesity, but I have to say it so that way it assimilates and you can actually remember these kinds of things. So obesity rib, ribs are difficult to feel, super thick, all of that stuff. So that's what you see on a body condition score, one through five. Now, there's also the one through nine scale that you see here. And they take it a little bit further with what you see. So for instance, on the far left, they have like this underweight as a three, ideal weight as a four to five. And then notice how it goes to a six to seven, eight to nine, and then all different uh, forms of nine based on body fat percentages. So this is a, a one through nine level that kind of enhances it a little bit further. So Royal Canaan, for instance, uses this. Hills also uses this now too. And so um, it's just a kind of an, an additional tool that we use. And same thing goes for cats as well. I just wanted to bring that to your attention because if you happen to see a scale of one through nine versus a one through five, it just gives you an idea. But this is fairly subjective. Now, we do this in cattle, we do this in horses, we do it in showing animals too. So it's, um, it's a very common thing. It's so common, everyone, that when we do our medical records, we have the TPRs, temperature, pulse, respiratory rate. We also have the BCS right in there, right smack in that template is a BCS, a body condition score. So if you come to me and we're talking about, and I'll say, mom, what are you feeding, what are you feeding Charlie? And sometimes I'll get this. Oh, don't look at me. Don't you're gonna you're gonna get so mad at me, Dr. Christman. I was like, no, I you know, I would like to know, you know. So let's just say, for instance, she's feeding Purina as an example, and she's like fe feeding Purina, and she's like, I swear, it's just you know the weight management. And I said, let's talk about body condition score. Now I know in my head that that's a five, like that is an obese dog that's presenting to me. But she says to me, well, he's a three. He's a three. He's a deal weight. He's on the the, the weight management food. And I'm going to show you why I disagree with you. Not saying that I'm right, but to say, listen, there's a disconnect. We need to change diet. Whatever is work, whatever we're doing is not working. So let's figure something out together. So that's why I really hone in on the body condition score. So I'm going to give you a moment, your turn, turning the microphone over back to you. But I just want you to hypothetically think in your head. You have a dachshund that's over here on the left-hand side of your screen, and you have a cat on the far right side of your screen. So now that we know the body condition score, we know that three is in the middle, four is overweight, five is obese, two is underweight, and one is emaciated. What do you think the dachshund is on the left? What do you think it is? I'll give you a second to think about it. Things to think of and consider is, remember, you should be able to see that abdominal waist and a tuck. Now, it would be great to have another view, but this kind of gives you a good idea. I like this angle because it's on a 45 degree angle. So you may say that this dachshund is a five and I would disagree with you. I would say this dachshund is a four. So this dachshund is most likely overweight. So not terribly obese, but enough to implement weight management. Because again, as we know with any of our dogs, uh, what are, what's associated with it, um, especially their backs. Now let's go to the right. What do you think that cat is? What do you think the cat is? You're right, that cat is a one. That cat is a walking cat anatomy lesson. You could see the ribs, you could see the spine, you could see the hip bones over there, the ischium, that little hump right by the tail over there. So that cat's a one. So it gives you an idea of body condition score. So I did a Let's video. Talk body condition score, also known as the BCS. A BCS is a subjective number from one to five with three being normal assigned to your pet based on evaluation of fat at key locations on their body. One means severely underweight, five is obese. Let's look at this cutie. So you should be able to look over their body like this and they should have a nice waistline and abdominal tuck that you see here. You should be able to feel the ribs but not see them. This dog gets a body condition score of a three. You're perfect. So look at Murphy. See how he's got, he's a little thin. I could see his ribs. I give him a body condition score of a 2.5. So this kitty has a body condition score of a three. Nice, very nice. So what's the body condition score here? What do you think this is here? So I could see her ribs a little bit. Little thin, what number? 
I give her a two. Monday finishing score four. Yes, five. Five obese. One emaciated. What's your fur baby? So I share that video with you for a couple of reasons. One, it's great practice. But two, yes, I'm on TikTok and I provide educational content. And this is something that pet parents yearn for. The content should be coming from the veterinarian, your practice, whoever it is. Um, it's something that is super important to do. So if those of you that are tuning in and watching, check with your veterinarian. They should be able to do this or your friends. Go on a TikTok. Follow me on TikTok, by the way, because it's a lot of fun. I do TikTok lives and it's a blast. But, but it is very engaging. This was a very engaging video that I got from pet parents too. So what are the risks associated with pet obesity? Cardiovascular disease, we know. Endocrine diseases. How many of your fur babies you know that can have uh, diabetes associated with it too? Osteoarthritis. I mean, the list goes on. It really does go on. But those are like the, the key players that I significantly talk about. I mean, they're coming in and they're... <sighs> I mean, granted, they might be a pug and, or English bulldog, and that's just their thing, of course. But, you know, it's even more reason to get some of that weight off of them, even more reason to get it off of them. So there's so many different reasons. So that other and final, the other takeaway I want you to know is obesity is a disease. I want you to say that to yourself, please. Obesity is a disease. When you think of diabetes, it's a disease. When you think of osteosarcoma or cancer, it's a disease. So obesity should be treated like no other. And sometimes, oftentimes, this can happen with us on the veterinary side of things, we just overlook it because we gotta talk about dental disease, we gotta talk about flea and tech preventative, we gotta talk about blood work, we gotta talk about maybe Cushing's disease, whatever it is. But then we sometimes fail to like really set them, we don't set the expectation up in the exam room. And so we want to set them up for what I like to call for success is what we call, because you don't want them to falter by any means. So what are some treatment plans? So you wanna feed the right food. Now, everybody has an opinion about this. There are three things people are super passionate about, politics, religion, and pet food. And so I tread very lightly when I talk about pet food, but I will tell you that, you know, I'm a scientist, we're veterinarians and we know research. So I'm research driven. And so data drives me, I love it. And so when I find a diet that may work really well for an animal, I go for it. And just like you and I, maybe a certain diet doesn't work well for us, whether it be for our digestive tract or we're not losing the weight in the way we want it to. So maybe we gotta change diets. Discuss exercise options. Like there are so many things now that, that you could do for dogs and cats. In fact, I'm about to post a video tomorrow about this cool laser thing that is for cats um, that you can actually, you know, even when you're working, you can work from, um, play with this device from your smartphone and it works all over the house so they can go and chase cat, chase the laser. It's really cool. And then also another cool thing that you're going to be seeing this year in 2021 is we're going to be bringing hunting back to cats. So cats spend 80% of their time in the wild hunting. And so as we have domesticated them, we have created, we just are providing them their food bowl and say, here you go, enjoy, you know, they're not working for it like they're used to. So you're going to see, and there are several examples that I'll be having in my videos coming up of uh, in, on TikTok of cool gadgets that cats can do to start hunting and, you know, getting that intuition back. And so they're going to be burning calories and getting their food, but it's a really cool method that hasn't been really used before four years ago. So that's pretty cool. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And then implement a program set up for a sucks. Yes, because, you know, get a cheerleader. You usually have somebody in the hospital or somebody that's good, a veterinary technician that coaches you. We had somebody for our practice and she would check in once a week because three ounces of weight loss to a chihuahua a week is a win. And I want you to celebrate that. I want you to celebrate that. And so we do that by either posting pictures, we do before and afters, we assess progress. Those are important things that we could do. So here's some a sound bite that I would suggest that, you know, Depends on who's watching, you know, but this is just an idea. I know you didn't think Milo was obese today, but we are going to work together to help get the weight off of him so that he can be with us for as long as possible. We will do this. So look what I'm saying there, like we, teamwork, together, because I don't want anyone to feel like they're going in on this alone because this is how you set up for a sex no. You, we want sex yes. And so how we do that is by working together and checking in on one another, especially now. I mean, virtual care. You know, I love virtual care. I love telemedicine. So you don't need to bring the dog in maybe. If you wanna get a scale yourself, go for it. 
show me on video, send me pictures, DM me pictures of what the dogs are looking like and the cats are looking like so we can work together on this. Don't, don't go in this alone because we can alter our, our, our plan together. So this is my personal takeaway of what I like to do as a veterinarian. So I like to calculate the calories, um, the, the utilized recommended diet by the veterinarian. So I try to figure out calorie intake. I do a slow transition if we have to change the food over 17 day and days of food, of new food. So that way we worry about dietary discretion. We don't want to get the vomit or the pukes or the squirts. So, and then increase exercise by 15 minutes is what we want to try to do. So again, it depends on the season, of course, but like look at the doggy daycares, even taking them out to like PetSmart Petco, cats, shoot, get um, things for them to climb, get them back to hunting, you could do it. So, and then reassessing in four weeks too. May always make sure that you're rechecking in four weeks is super uber important because you want to see if, are we going up or going down or not doing anything? So that's important. So for dogs, it's about one to 2% of their total body weight per week. And for cats, it's about 0.5 to 2% of their body uh, weight per week as well. So for example, if you have a hundred pound Labrador retriever, he can safely lose one to two pounds per week, depending on what your target goal is, of course. So let's just say that was for like 85 pounds. So, um, so my final thoughts to you is that obesity is a disease. Treat it like one. I want you to treat it like it's a disease. Now, here's my ultimate final takeaway for you is that obesity is reversible, my friends. It's reversible. I can't begin to tell you, I wish I could say that cancer is reversible or diabetes in dogs is reversible or glaucoma, like those kinds of things. No, but this, this is reversible. So we can do this together and they can live further and have a healthy life. So set up for success, not for failure. Empower the pet parent. Take photos and post is super important because I love it. And Here's where you can find all my stuff. I'm all over and I love it. I love interacting with pet parents and veterinarians and colleagues. So here at DVM360.com, we provide great educational resources for my fellow colleagues. As mentioned in the opening is that I work with continuing education for veterinarians for the Fetch conferences. I love doing it. We're remote, virtual, hopefully going live at the end of the year. I have my own website, dradamchristman.com, the uh, Facebook page, The Adam Christman Show, Instagrams where you can find me a lot, Adam underscore Christman. My new home is on TikTok, <laughs> Dr. Adam Christman 52. I have my YouTube channel, The Dr. Christman Show. And then also find me on LinkedIn too. And by the way, on the left is two of them are, are hidden in there. One's there, one's Carl on my lap and there's Connor on uh, right by me over there too because I was filming a little pet show 